<clears throat> I won the Kenneth Seven Award last year to, uh, by writing an article uh, replying to the president's uh, annual question. And that question was, what will structural engineer practice look like in 10, 15 years' time, and how can our professional community help us prepare for this? So uh, I decided to go for a, an unusual approach on writing this article in, uh, in the terms that uh, it's, it's non-technical. So this will be a, uh, an imagination break for all of you apart from uh, all the mathematics and physics you've, uh, you've seen today. And uh, it, it's all about imagination now. So has any, any of you got the chance to read it so far? So. Now, this, this is the answer I got from the previous group. So I will quickly go <laughs> through uh, the synopsis and inspiration for, for my article. So I imagined how an engineering practice will look like based on challenges that I personally uh, faced during my um, career as a structural engineer. And I've concluded it with three, uh, three things that I would um, improve or do in the future for, for our community to, to, to strive. So the idea behind this article was to rely only on imagination. So I think imagination is an essential trait of a structural engineer. So as, as, as you look in, in, into uh, the great engineers of our, of our century, probably, they, they all had imagination. And imagination leads to uh, innovation. So if you have imagination as an engineer, you're an innovator. And for me, innovation and being an innovator represents the pure definition of the future. So as the article unfolds towards its conclusion, I'm just going, uh, I'm just taking the reader through a, a common day from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, just, just a guided tour through an engineering practice. And I'm putting an emphasis on how the graduates or how the young members um, are being included in, in the, the future practice. So I will have some bits of uh, uh, sci-fi parts in the article. If you, if you go and read it, that, and, and the inspiration from that comes from the Jetsons. I don't know if you've seen the Jetsons or any cartoons or... It, it's something that uh, when, when, when I was a kid, I was very, very uh, uh, impressed about how, how the future was being imagined by some people in 1960. So if people in 1960 imagine the future that's almost looking like that in the present, then we should start shaping the future now for, for uh, the future 30 or 40 years. Also, a great inspiration for me was... Uh, was the writer Jules Verne who imagined, and it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily an engineer, but he imagined a lot of um, inventions, for example, the submarine. Uh, and the last part, which I uh, quite referenced in my article with images, is a project that I've come across during my first year in university in 2008, and it's called the Lilypad Project by these are the uh, uh, Jetsons you probably know. So the Lilypad project by the architect Vincent Calibot in, in France was a concept for a completely self-sufficient floating city intended to provide shelter for future climate change refugees. So 11 years ago, people thought about it. People thought about the future and people started to imagine it. And I tried to do the same thing by writing a short novel about how I imagine the future to look like. Again, the article is non-technical and is written in a style that resembles with the novel, so it's, it's an it's a easy lecture for, for everybody. This would be uh, the sketches from Jules Verne's Nautilus submarine. So how I imagine the practice to look like. I'm describing the practice through um, the, uh, as the hours pass by during the day. So obviously when you, talk, when, when you think about the future, you would imagine a minimalistic office with optimized work areas, with high-tech retina signing signatures, robots all over the place, brewing me a coffee, and plenty of ergonomic seating. This is probably 
um, common for our brains to uh, understand and to imagine when, when, you, when someone asks you, uh, well, how's the future looking like? A lot of digital glass that I've Im imagined throughout the office, glass that can be um, also a screen that can also dim to uh, make privacy space and, and, and so on. And uh, a lot of focus on holograms and holo meetings that usually brought the people working in a different project in this engineering practice together. And I'll say bringing people together, and I meant from all over the world, people participating in a project on different disciplines, coming together inside a meeting room with holograms or holo meetings. And this, I thought, it would be the... Uh, the mainstream way of communication in the future. So this this is this is quite a, a snippet from 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 my article. So I'm I'm, I'm starting with uh, describing how I got there. So it's uh, a driverless electrical train and retina scan and, and and so on. And the article unfolds by starting from 9 a.m. and going up up until 4 p.m going through different aspects, different challenges that I try to hide inside the storyline just so I can explain in the conclusions. So after describing how an engineering practice looks like and probably how the, what, what challenges um, we will uh, foresee in the future, I'm coming and uh, proposing uh, three ways of preparing ourselves, ourselves as an engineering uh, professional community for the future. So I'm going uh, uh, to conclude by talking about three, three aspects. And the first aspect would be collaboration. And by collaboration, we, I, I try to mean uh, helping each other by sharing knowledge. It's a thing that I uh, uh, definitely uh, came across in my working, in my working experience, uh, situations where I try to find something engineering related and I can't simply find it. There's absolutely no forum, there's absolutely no digital environment out there to, to, uh, to give me that. And probably I, I've missed these examples and I, I will just give you an example for, for this one. If the, do you know if there is a, a, a manual calc for a post-tensioning slab out there? There isn't. I've tried to search for it for two years. There's nobody who did a manual calculation for an actual slab being post-tensioned. Or how can you find the cracking moment or the yielding moment for a concrete section, for a con rectangular double, double reinforced concrete section? It's very difficult to, to find it over the internet. So. I'm proposing uh, th that the future will hold a very collaborative environment for us engineers. Things that we can go and if we have a question, we can ask different colleagues of our branch, even they, if, if they're young engineers or even if they are most senior engineers. We, we, must, uh, we must have a pool of information always available, otherwise the internet is, is just a u useless thing if we can't find information. Also, by collaboration, uh, I mean, I, I meant to, to have different publications and different articles and different books that are for free. Because as for now, if I want to search an article over the internet, or I either have to pay for the book, or I either have to pay for, 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 for the article just, just to read it. And I think that that should, should come, come along as being a free general for all knowledge. Uh, the second thing is about social challenges that we are facing today. And the social challenges that we are facing today, although we have access to information, we, I've seen that we, have, we are barely starting to know each other as cultures. And when I say barely know each other as cultures or barely started to accept and learn about inclusion and accept diversity among us is that we have been exposed to different cultures due to the freedom of information. But we are now 
clashing with those cultures and we are learning about how other people from other cultures are doing things. And we sometimes, we, we either say, well, you, you don't know these for, 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 for sure, or you're, you're not thinking correctly or different situations. So I believe the majority of you already work with the international uh, environment and from, with people from all over the world. They have different ways of doing things, and sometimes the ways are better. Sometimes you will find uh, materials used uh, by other um, uh, people from, from overseas that you, you wouldn't ever use in, in a different environment and, and so on. So I'm proposing for the cultures to uh, get together, but uh, first of all, we, I'm, I'm envisaging people getting together as humans before uh, getting together as professionals. And the last thing that I, I talked about was tailoring the education system. Uh, from my experience, I've, I've been through, uh, through different, different educational systems in different countries. And I've seen that uh, the, the books or the, uh, the projects that are being taught in university are the same today that they were 10 years ago. So if the technology is changing, well, it's not an if. It's a default. The technology is rapidly changing, is rapidly evolving. Then the education system or the academia needs to keep up with uh, with all the uh, technological advancements. Not not only the software, but also the con construction techniques. I've seen that uh, in the UK in the past years there have been so many uh, bridges built between the academia and uh, the industry. And the institution is uh, the institution of structural engineer is uh, contributing uh, loads to to build those bridges. So this is my call for um, you and for us as structural engineers, young or senior, to get involved with the education and to go and um, show the students the practice, how the practice is applied to the theory they will learn. So con conclusion is that the temporal bracket 10, 15 years ago is, is not that far away. So the future, that the 10 years uh, away future has already started today. So I said we should look towards tackling these challenges today as tomorrow may be too late. So this was my uh, article. These were my, these were, uh, my opinions and uh, what I think that we need to do uh, first so that we can thrive as a, and we can continue to grow as a, continue, as, a, as a professional community. So thank you. And uh, you have the article uh, source in this link over here. You can also search for it on uh, the institution's website.